I think there's really no better people to talk about this topic um, um, with than who are very Sophie and Louise. I'm really, really happy to have you here. Thank you so, so much for joining. Primavera is a 2021 Foresight Fellow, and that is, I think, uh, the, the smallest of our honors to you. I think like, whenever I look at your bio, I have like my mind blown. And meanwhile, you're also a deep institutionalist. So like very much also changing, uh, changing the status quo and changing even on like, I guess, how you do the signaling through academic, uh, academic channels. We're still here who <clears throat> is a fantastic lawyer and is uh, at, at Gnosis. And I think um, whenever we need a little bit like non-binding, no legal advice, uh, just someone to talk to, then I, I re always really appreciate and chat with you. And we have Louis here um, from Starkware, uh, which is a really fantastic uh, new project that is all about ZK Proof. So I think uh, many of you in the audience are quite excited about this technology. And so he'll be a great one for you guys to chat. But maybe let's actually pick up on where we left it off, which is the individual technology trees. Let's use them as a bit of a plot device. And so Silky, tell us a little bit about what it Oh, <laughs> that's, let's start with love the, oh, oh, that is love for Silky. <laughs> Silky, you did, you did I want to create love for yourself. So then it's you, P. Okay. So P, tell us a little bit about what it is that you're working on. Where do you see uh, this headed? Love is your final end goal. I like it. So share a little bit what is the technology tree that you created in Web3 and crypto covers and how is it that other people can plug in? Okay. Um, yeah, so just as a disclaimer, this was done yesterday night at dinner, and I don't know how these little hearts came about, but um, I blame Silke. Um, so the, the tech field is blockchain, and uh, this is pretty much uh, all I'm doing uh, since quite too many years. Um, and then, and I mean, technology, I mean, you know, the obvious peer to peer networks and cryptography and stuff like that, but maybe one more interesting that is. Um, uh, less uh, common is actually execution and its theory, uh, which is actually quite important to enable blockchain technology. Um, Can you share? Who here knows what executions are? Okay, we have a few people That's here. actually quite a lot. Yeah. Um, I've been trying to brainwash a few people yesterday already, but uh, still a lot of work to do. Uh, so executional theory is a new theory that uh, actually was born a few months, years ago here in this castle. Um, and uh, the idea is to explore how, um, on the one hand, we have like the structure of an institution, which is made by roles and rules. Uh, and on the other hand, we have the culture of a social organization, which is made of individuals and relationship. And why this is extremely important for blockchain is because uh, oftentimes when we look at blockchain technologies, we focus almost exclusively on the question of the institutional design, uh, meaning the protocol, the smart contract, and so forth. And we tend to forget that there is a whole underlying or wrapping uh, thing which we definitely like, uh, you know, exist but we don't talk about, which, is, which we refer to as off-chain governance, uh, which is all the institutional um, dynamics that exist within a blockchain-based system and the only way to actually understand the way in which a blockchain system operates is by looking both at the technical protocol but also at the institutional dynamics of the people using that protocol. Uh, so this is uh, very important and this is, uh, this is why this actually is relevant to my research institutional theory. Um, and then what are the capabilities? So um, DAOs, well, the decentralized autonomous organization, so the possibility of actually having uh, new models by which people can attempt to coordinate themselves in a more or less centralized or decentralized manner. Uh, we have NFTs, uh, which is, I think, one of the most interesting uh, and revolutionary capabilities that blockchain provides, especially for uh, digital artists, but not only. Um, we have like uh, some very uh, important fashion artists here, so that is working on NFT. Um, and, uh, and then uh, the question about confidence and trust. Um, so um, blockchain technology are oftentimes described as trustless, uh, meaning that we are eliminating the need for trust. But actually, if we do look at the institutional dynamics, we very fast recognize that actually there is a lot of trust clusters that need to be accounted for. But also when we talk about trustless, it's kind of like a negative definition of 
something that can also be described in a positive way, which is actually building confidence. Um, and so blockchain technology, one of the very important capabilities is that it, it's creating things that we can actually have confidence in. Uh, so it's not just that we are eliminating the trust, it's actually that we are creating predictability, accountability, trustability, and so forth. Um, now, what is the end goal? Um, it might sound stupid that it says love, but that's because you don't see what's underneath, because it's dark, but it's love plus unegality. Uh, and it's the combination of love and illegality which actually leads to a very interesting end goal. Um, illegality is uh, another term that is uh, a little bit strange, um, which is basically describing those things that are not legal and also not illegal. Uh, it's just that they exist in these gray areas of the law, but by existing in those gray areas of the law, they are also pushing and they are like triggering, they are like exciting the boundaries of the law uh, because the law is trying to understand and trying to reach out to it, but is also um, somehow evolving itself according to this. Um, and so why it's really important is because illegality is great, but also illegality can have problems. And so it's really important that we add some love to the illegality. Um, and the reason that this is there is because um, for me, the biggest challenge is actually governments because all of those capabilities cannot be achieved without proper governments. Um, and, um, you know, mm. Maybe love can actually help the governments. I don't know, Simke, maybe, maybe you know better about that. That was, <laughs> that was just like an attempt at, uh, at adding some uh, uh, human layer to the blockchain world. Um, can you be more, like in terms of challenges to solve, you mentioned governance there. What's a specific thing that you'd like people you know, to solve here? What, like governance, that's, that's, a, that's a hard problem to solve. Uh, anything in particular? Uh, I mean, actually, I'm really talking about governance at the full level, but we can try to specify. Um, I think there is like three layers. Uh, the first one is the actual governance of blockchain communities, and that's actually what relates to the institutional layer, meaning that all those capabilities, DAO, confidence, NFT, etc., uh, can only be achieved if the community, if the network is actually properly governed, because otherwise there is no confidence whatsoever because you cannot trust that the system will actually work as expected. Uh, there is also institutional governance, meaning that once we figured out a uh, proper governance of blockchain technology, then we also need to figure out proper governance by blockchain technology, meaning like how can existing organization, institutions, community, adopt this technology within their own governance structure in order to improve uh, the transparency, the accountability, etc. And then I think there is also this very interesting global governance level, um, meaning that uh, we have a tendency of creating overarching organizations in order to enable the coordination of people that are interdependent. Um, and I think there is something very interesting in exploring ways in which we can coordinate people on a global scale and on a transnational level uh, without relying on creating new institutional framework, but actually by creating shared databases and, uh, and specific protocols and proper uh, governance around that in order to actually maybe solve some uh, some global challenges. Great, so you've heard it, quite the laundry list. Um, all right, uh, maybe moving on to Sylvia, I'm bringing your slide up, uh, and perhaps you wanna give us a little bit uh, of an understanding of your tech tree node. Yeah. Um, oh wow, we have DAOs in there twice. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's pretty much the same. <laughs> so, I mean, in the middle you can see, so, just following on from what Primavera said, um, Primavera is very much the theorist, the one that puts the thing in categories and does it really, really well. And in institutional non-categories, of course. I'm much more of a, the practical lawyer. What I do is um, find loopholes to ensure that we can stay within the illegal um, space um, that I was just mentioning. So, I mean, what do I do? I mainly work in uh, blockchain uh, law and crypto law. Um, I'm also a mathematician. 
but um, you just mentioned, well, there are also DAOs. And I think at the moment, um, Primavera suggested DAOs, the year of the DAO was 2015. I then th thought that it would be in 2019, but in fact, it only came about very much to life uh, this year. And I think the year of the DAO is going to be next year. Well, so people should not feel upset if they see the tech tree here with a lot of the DAO collaboration points. Um, what is for me very important in terms of um, what can DAOs do? I mean, as you can see, I have put a very radical end goal, which is the end of nation states. That's just a, put it a little bit more radical than what she said, which was more diplomatic, which is the illegality of the entire space. Um, so how can we get there? It's basically through the worldwide, I mean, it's a global collaboration on a, val it, uh, on a very um, cost or relatively cost efficient scale for humankind um, to deal with. Um, what do you need for this? You need digital identities, which are on the tech stack actually gives you and it allows you to tokenize, it, it allows you to tokenize everything. It's basically price everything if you want to say it in a very provocative way. But, and you cannot see it here. You have self enforcing justice, um, which I'm, which very, very close to mine. But, this year, and I want to be a bit more like maybe down to earth on the challenges. What I really care about, and I think Luis can help me with this in a bit, <laughs> is, is the naked government a problem, which is that you have um, DAOs and everything is absolutely transparent. A lot of people suggest that this is wonderful, this is how it should be, but in fact, I it, it is not because what we get is, is this black mirror surveillance society, which we have to prevent. And for that, um, there is a really nice tech stack, uh, which has been developed over several years, which is the zero knowledge proof uh, area. And at the moment, uh, blockchain is not very good with privacy. And I really much hope that it is going to improve. Um, and you're going to solve my uh, naked government problem. Let's speak to and so this year it's called all of it, this coming year is all going to be about DAOs and how we can um, have, you know, manage or structure this um, a legal space between people in different countries, people working for different DAOs. How do you do it? How can you ensure that you do not fall full of the tax regulations? So usually my questions are very much to this. But now, um, Luis, maybe you can tell me a bit more of how you can solve my naked government problem. <laughs> Let me get to my uh, tech stack and I will, uh, tech three, I will be able to, to claim my problem and yeah. chat about it. We, we, we'll, we'll try to bring it up, but um, for now, perhaps just explain a little bit, what are you working on? Who here does not know what zero knowledge proofs are? I can spend a little bit. Yeah, go for it. Oh, zero knowledge proof is a concept was invented in 1884 by two professors, or tried to go by Mississippi uh, Cali, uh, Professor Adelaide T, I believe, uh, and a Weissman uh, Institute of Technology in Israel. And uh, they got the three awards for it. And basically, the, the sort of a problem that we didn't know we had, which was how can I convince you that I have a solution for something without showing you that solution? So think about it in terms of accounting. So you are this company, you want to do a name in a you want to buy this gold company. So you're going to check that you, they're, they're, they're uh, profitable, they are, uh, they're solvent and so on and so forth. The thing is, as the buying company, I mean, as a purchase company, I need to give you all my financial, everything. And now you can walk away knowing everything there is to know about myself. And so VKP is a way that would enable this way where the company, the purchasing company can actually ask questions about the data from the purchase company without revealing anything else than the information that is required by the question. So let's say, is a profit to the company profitable? The answer is yes, no. I don't need to know every cell contract you think you ever did. Or is a good company solvable? Yes, you can check. Uh, I can show you that my bank gave to go zero. And this is what DKP are. And the cool thing about DKP is that fast enough we discover that they also break one of the things that actually blockchain does, and blockchain does 
uh, trustlessness through replication. So naive replication. So when the miner creates a block and the verifier checks, checks it, they spend the same amount of time. In complexity, I can explain it more about it, but like in terms of number of operation, I'm going to do exactly the same thing that the gang created the block. And so in ZKP, you can make the, the, the miner or the, the prover spend a bit more time, but everyone after him is going to have an exponential speed speedup. And this is why ZKP has been talked to nuts, both in terms of privacy and for scaling when it comes to, to crypto. I hope that's a short answer. Yeah. So this was within the two and a half minutes on the table. Just three hours. It's uh, so, uh, so yeah. So I'm gonna, yeah, you want me to ask? Go for it. Go for it. Go go for it. Okay, great. So, so what? What is an exciting end goal for your field? Where do you? Think uh, so this, I call it edge blockchain, and and edge blockchain is it's a, just a word I came up because I couldn't find it. There's a second ago uh, definition. So one of the main issue we have with blockchain right now, like Ethereum, Solana, Bitcoin, is that at the end of the day, it won't fit in your phone. Just a little bit in your phone. And you have to, re to rely on those infra or various services that are centralized and could be their own or could be formatted in some um, uh, sort of post apocalyptic post 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 scenario. And when we talk about blockchain, we always think of worst case scenario. So you need to actually think about the post apocalyptic scenario. And so age blockchain, where they're just a probably of their name somewhere, uh, is its ability for the actually for the chain to actually trustlessly be able to to run in your phone and the only way to achieve it is using uh, the, stack, uh, the tech stack that uh, Starkware or ZKP people want to build. Uh, there is no other way to get to solve the verifiability issue in a, in a, in a scalable fashion. And so uh, what it enables is uh, trust execution. Uh, so uh, I can write something for you and you can trust me without having to redo the computation. Uh, increasing uh, trans uh, accounting, interest rates are increasing transparency, which was blockchain provide, but I think just completely different here. And what enables it actually is actually quite cool. Not much. It just, uh, it was uh, just a very more invention that came out in the last 10 years, which just used very cool math. Uh, the fact that blockchain exists, people realized that that was a need for it. And uh, cloud computing for, for the story, because it's like you're, you've got quite, quite, quite strong computers because the prover has to do things. And so, yeah, like this is, from my perspective, one of the most exciting field there is right now when it comes to the insight in the world. And, um, and uh, one thing that I think I wish would be actually sold is privacy. And the thing about privacy is that no one actually here this, in real life. And this is extremely true in, in, in crypto. Like people say, oh, privacy is super necessary, blah, blah, blah. But when it comes to the end users, they actually don't feel the need. They, they, they kind of feel like I have nothing to hide. And this is a very big problem in terms of mindset. So what I do wish to see coming in the next couple of years is privacy becoming a concern and people actually embracing it and adopting those tech to make a, a like a, to solve the naked problem, a government problem, which is that no, right in my perspective that no one cares, just Slightly annoying. Slightly annoying. Any comments to uh, any of your ind individual trees? You like you both have ZKPs and they both have DAOs in there. Um, yes. Sorry. Quick, quick comments regarding the fact that you know you, you, you perceive privacy as not not mattering because people. No, no, I'm not. I'm not saying oh. the matter. Although they don't care because actually they still they don't care. Doing something they don't care. Privacy at risk. But don't you think it's actually just a factor of effectively immediate need versus long-term concern and just a triumph of short-termism versus long-termism? I mean, probably, but you know, people don't care until they care. And when we care, it's too much. And so, so the only action place where I do see people care is, is in gay. And actually, it's always bring my, well, I look at those things, like you know, those sorts of innovation. The funny story is, it's, I always have this uh, quote from Christensen, the uh, innovation delay that I read a long time ago which says every innovation looks like a toy until it doesn't. And, and so I do expect privacy to become important in gaming because you can play a decentralized game without privacy. Because otherwise, like, you, I mean, you can play chess, but that's not really, that, not all game with chess. And then from, from the chess game, it's like it's actually pop out and, and actually came out to the, to the everywhere. That's first in my two steps. Yeah, okay, we have a few comments here in the front. Yeah, oh, oh, go, go for it. Do you want to make a comment? No, no, no. Let's, I'll, I'll, I'll make my comment later on that privacy one. So I love the mathematics of cryptography and I'm kind of dreading the actual implementation because 
If there is one thing computer security has uh, demonstrated, it's that it's actually surprisingly brittle. Many, uh, we can do differential privacy, enable privacy, there are beautiful mathematical theorems, but if we implement it slightly badly, the privacy disappears. Uh, many of these zero knowledge proofs can handle information, but you also need to implement it in the right way, otherwise they can be hacked. But perhaps most importantly, you want to construct robust systems that people can actually use. I got a PhD in computer science, and I find it very hard to use crypto for anything. I'm finding it too complicated. My uh, aunt is not going to be able to get it. And in order for these things technology to work, we probably need to have both the robustness that if something goes slightly wrong, it doesn't completely collapse. Uh, and also, that it can go slightly wrong for my aunt, and she can still use the system. It seems to me that we have these twin challenges, and they're almost opposite to each other, because having something that's very easy to use, that's usually in a, in a much less uh, robust, but robust systems are very heavy to use. Wait. Uh, building on that, I think I was uh, just agreeing with, with what you're saying. I, I, I feel like the privacy issue here is not necessarily that people don't care. It's that in order to enable um, you know, these privacy preserving technologies, you have to jump through a bunch of hoops. Uh, there's a bunch of limitations. Um, the, the user experience uh, tends to be worse when you have uh, a, you're using a more secure system, right? So I think this is one of the, uh, the you know bigger challenges that we solve as well. Thank you. Yeah, we actually just. Um, what I wanted to add here is also that you have um, usually a legal um, problem with this because right now uh, regulators are, are on this planet are very happy with the very the transparency of all the systems. And obviously this transparency is not good. I mean, if I see people on Twitter, they have an ENS name on it. And then I look into their transaction history and I see basically their whole bank account, like their whole transaction history. I put it into one of, and I'm a lawyer, I don't have that many computer skills in that. I then go to Nansen AI and I put it in and I know basically everything on, about this person because this person made a mistake um, um, having their ENS or just not keeping their ENS um, account clean. And these things are not going to go away. I mean, they, they, they will be forever and ever um, associated with this account. I mean, yeah, they could stop using it, but if you are called John Smith, or, and that's a bad name, like let's say you're j called uh, John from Lippo Schaumburg, which, you know, everyone will know this world wants probably your account and that's all these stupid transactions you made um, in 2021. So we really have an urgency on solving these issues and it's true with the, um, the user, it's not very user friendly. Um, and this is also what the regulator care, but there is at the moment this massive there's, in a way, a, a, a quite a, a regulatory onslaught, which we, however, could somehow solve with having ZKP being um, have a d bespoke disclosure, which several projects are actually working on. So you can use privacy, you can have complete darkness of your transactions, um, but when the regulator wants to know something, you can actually disclose it, and you can show that you are not that bad guy, that you only really care that not everyone sees you're using those really wonderful taboo tokens or whatever stupid DEX transaction you did um, previously. So um, these are, I mean, for me, this is the, the privacy, um, which I call the naked government problem. We, I think we agree totally on this, um, is one of the main issues. It's also in relation, DAOs give so much, they give so much opportunity. You have this thing now, which is like squad wells or like this, retail investor, this very populist um, approach to investment, which may lead to the end of infantilizing investors or like just empowering people to make their own choices. If you cannot get the privacy onto that, you cannot, and you cannot defeat the big guy in a way. You can, you probably all of you heard, like follow the constitution DAO um, attempt to uh, buy the constitution two weeks ago. The reason why this failed is because it was absolutely clear how much money these people had, like how much did we have to actually bid with Sotheby's. Um, so lovely owner of Citadel could of course just buy the constitution because the auction process was a, a, a non-private auction process 
and a non-private coupled with a non-private money raising event is just not going to allow us to do the things we want to do. So what we need is we have we need to have dark DAOs. We need to have them being saved by Louis next to me. <laughs> Don't give me that kind of reason. <laughs> it's definitely I would say that more better before that myself when it comes to privacy uh, stuff. Um, I just to go back to your question about simplicity and and, and um, uh, grid all systems. Um, that's a very good point. Um, and what happened though? Maybe that's true for cryptography in general. It's 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 a, like cryptography until very recently was this field where you have those very smart mathematician doing very cool things, but only one paper was ever used, and uh, and like and three two different implementations of different things like a hash function, like three and like. It keep your edits curve like like two, and so it was an engineering field, and so mathematicians are great, but listen, they they if you read a, a cryptographic paper, you're like, why don't you speak English? Like, uh, just please write something that like a, a human can read, like an engineer can read. And so what actually happened? Uh, I, don't know. I mean, like, don't get me started between the issue of some education and the issue. Be careful, I I will get there. Um, nonsense, but story there is what's happening though in the last four years when it comes to, to zero knowledge is um, that you are actually engineering team building cryptography for engineers. Meaning before they said that you got the two things, but now VCKP actually have programs. And for instance, Starbury, I'm gonna two minutes of cheating here. But like we just published this new uh, language, which is called Cairo. It's like a general purpose language during complete yeah. right in And so we try to make it user friendly and developer friendly at least. And so I do expect that by the time, I mean, and before that there were the credits and there was Circom and Circom is doing an amazing job when it comes to large. Um, we are getting there when it to the simplicity, but it's still another head because you, it's not like a straightforward system. It's not another straightforward system. You need to think about what information do I read? What, what do I need to care about? And that's why the only, uh, the only space where I see actually privacy can explore is uh, a game called Dark Forest, if you're familiar, if you're familiar with and Dark Forest was built by cryptographers. It's a cryptographer. And so, so I do see the hustle to, to, to make it happen. But I think it's also, it will, it's not only because it's a real system, it's not only because it's, uh, it's hard to make. I think it's it a it shift in the way you're, as a developer, you think what's about, about your project. Thank you. And yeah, I, ju I just wanted to make uh, uh, two comments. Uh, one about like, why do people don't care about privacy? Yeah. I think there is also, um, it's not just that they don't care. I think it's that they get something from sharing their data, uh, which is personalization, customization, and so forth. And, um, and the trade-off is actually usually, well, I want to have a super, super customized system and I'm happy to, to give up my privacy. And I think that's what, uh, actually it's like a cool help because you can actually like, uh, the knowledge profiles, the knowledge database, things like that, like you actually could get some level of customization and personalization without having to forego your privacy. And in that case, the trade of change, right? And so I think that's important. And the other comment I wanted to make is with regard to, I, have, I think with, uh, with uh, blockchain and ZKP and so forth, like we can actually move um, away from this, like from like a regulatory perspective, from a system of surveillance and oversight and monitoring and auditing like constantly uh, to a system of exposed verifiability, yeah. right? Which is, you just keep track of things. You keep track, but you don't have to communicate and no one needs to see everything you're doing. But you know that exposed at some point, you can verify everything that has happened in the past. And that's like a different approach. And you can mean like there is clearly a way to get proper regulatory compliance by using those technologies and ensuring that if needed, you can actually disclose the information. I do have two yeah. comments. Okay, we have to quickly. close out, just, but yeah, just one comment. So I, about the customization, I'm, I'm not sure I agree, but I just do have one thing to say that is some systems that were extremely successful in, on blockchain are basically like this and either quantity or possible to, to happen with CKP based well, where private will be a So for instance, the Uniswap. Uniswap cannot exist or barely can exist under um, a DK people, a kind of private. So there is this paper from Davon uh, Shitra about like differential Uniswap. It's a very green, it's a very classic. 
it's a, it's a small one, but it's, a, it's very good. And the second third point, which I forgot, uh, about post doc, uh, post, uh, first, uh, it basically like works today. Like, it, it, it should, work, it should work today. You think that black box, so we don't really know what it's work, how it works. But the, 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 the still, the thing is, until it becomes super easy and the mindset of devs change, we won't see it happen. Because at the end of the day, those are individuals working in their garage, in their, in their basement, whatever, doing things that actually happen to be the next big project, the big thing that's going to, we're going to use. And this is like, it, it, you can't, it's not top up, it's pretty bottom up, it needs to be simple for them. Thank you. Okay, we won't close the privacy problem today. This is really like in the panels here, I really just to open up your guys' perspective because then the real work will be done in the breakouts for later today where all of the speakers will be um, corralling in front of the individual tech trees about their technology. All of you guys get to join, put your individual notes up and you really hash it out. And that's when I think the real conversations happen. We can only like open up a few boxes of Pandora really in this regard uh, and you guys get to close them later. I do want to say, um, you know, uh, like on the privacy, like, yes, I think it will get much more important, especially also because machine learning will become better, uh, something that we will discuss uh, on the next panel. And so traffic analysis will just become better over the next few years. And so once it's already out there, it's out there. And it's kind of like today at this point. So I think we need to get going and we need to like, you know, um, um, we need to uh, really like have privacy preserving solutions in place ASAP, because I think everything that we already have out there right now is already up for grabs uh, over the next few years. So that, that, that problem won't go away. Okay, and that's a very good segue for us to introduce our next panel, which is the, we're moving now from decentralized computing and crypto. Thank you so, so, so much, guys, for your amazing insight. Um.